Hello from Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I am Dan Edwards. I am the uh, um, here with Seattle's Eastside Real Estate Podcast, the podcast dedicated to living on the East Side. And I'm going to tell you at the end of the show what I am doing in Kansas City and what it has to do with the East Side, because I can promise you, I promise you 100% it relates. Um, if you are watching live, please feel free to comment. We'd love to see your comments and share this stream with others so they can learn about uh, our fantastic Eastside community. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, we'd love for you to subscribe to it by clicking the subscribe button and the alert bell so that you can know when we're live again. Um, today, we are welcoming Doug Peterson with Get Priority Straight to discuss personal finances. Um, but first, let's start off with some real talk. What's motivating everybody to move these days? This year, Americans are moving for a variety of reasons. Um, obviously, a healthcare crisis has uh, reshaped our lifestyles in more ways than one. Spending much time in our current home makes a whole lot of sense, and it's having people reconsider what home ownership means to them. Um, what they are looking for is finding their most valuable spaces. And in some aspects, they're reconditioning spaces. Oh, there's a phone call. We're going to mute that because that's usually what we do when we go live. Um, it's getting them to re no, So we got this study according to the national associate. Well, it's the annual national movers study. Uh, according to the survey with uh, the top reasons for moving are very COVID associated in relationship to personal health concerns. So uh, according to the survey, 60% of the respondents said that it was their desire to be close, closer to family. Now, 57% moved um, uh, due to changes in employment status and 53% uh, desire to change to improve the quality of life. Now I'm reading that study and I'm like, well, hold on. And you know, I won't, I'll get my financial expert in here, but when you take 60% and add 57% and add 60, 53%, that's way over hundred percent. So I'm not quite sure what this correlation means, but let's just take it from a priority standpoint is essentially a high, a high quantity of people um, have decided to move because they wanted to be closer to family. And then the second most important reason for moving was because of some kind of change in their employment status. And the third most important uh, reason for moving was lifestyle changes. So let's take a look at what these reasons, these lifestyle changes and what it means. First off, working from home. So remote work has become um, probably solidified in the HR department for most companies as a very viable option, not only for getting stuff done, but for being very, very productive. Now, there are some companies that have said indefinitely people can do remote work. And I can tell you the East Side real estate team has helped quite like a handful of people that are relocating throughout the country, yet they're keeping their job. So, um, so that's one aspect is that working from home. Now, there have been some folks that as a result of losing the job have decided to move to a different location that provides them with other opportunities. For those of you watching this from outside the Seattle area, I can tell you Amazon, Facebook, Google, Boeing, all of these companies are growing and bringing more people to our region. So if you're looking for a great community to live in and you're thinking about moving to Seattle, I want you to consider the East Side. And we'd be happy to share with you a little bit more about what makes the East Side special. So relocation for work and working from home, that's a number one. Number two is room for fitness activities. Um, you may remember the scene from Step Brothers, maybe not, but uh, uh, the, the brothers build a couple of bunk beds. And every time I see this room for fitness activities, I can picture Will Ferrell going, so much room for activities. Okay, so maybe you haven't seen that but I have, and it just runs through my head when I see this, but also from a uh, standpoint of trying to stay healthy while you're working from home, prioritizing more family time, I want to advise you, if you plan on doing box jumps, please make sure you have a vaulted ceiling. Yeah, they can hurt. The seven foot ceiling, box jumps, two foot box jump, bad news. Anyways, not that I learned from experience, but I've heard others did. All right. So uh, interesting st study showed a survey of 4,538 uh, 4, active adults um, from 122 countries that the fitness trends, at-home fitness equipment up 50%, 
personal fitness trainers and nutritionalists up 48% and uh, subscriptions to online courses and classes, 17%. I have to say, that's fantastic, right? When we were uh, all kind of mindlessly going into the gym or going to our fitness classes and then tragedy strikes and we have this huge pandemic and it's awesome to see so many people just got out there and figured out a way to stay fit. So that's great. And having that room to maintain that healthy lifestyle, AKA vaulted ceilings, prompts people to consider a move. And then lastly, and this one uh, may surprise those of you here in the Northwest, but outdoor space became extremely popular and it became a priority for homeowners. Um, we actually built an additional section on our barbecue so that we can have, that was one of my COVID projects is I went out there and built a, like something I had wanted to build for a very long time. We had this wall right next to the barbecue and it was full of other stuff. And we built a nice little, um, countertop so we could kind of build stuff on. So outdoor kitchens were 60% of home uh, homeowners looking to add outdoors. Um, so here's the bottom line. If you're, if you look at your home, you went through this pandemic, you did every kind of upgrade you can, uh, every kind of upgrade to the house that you could, and you're still not satisfied, it's not providing you with the spaces you, you need, please reach out to the Eastside Real Estate team because we can help. That is our real talk for today. Now, after this short commercial break, we're going to be speaking with our friend Doug Peterson from Get Priority Straight. So here is our short commercial with Green City Pest. So the pest stops here. Green City Pest Control is your full service pest solution for all your pest control needs. With, the owner of, with an owner uh, that has 32 years of experience, a board certified entomologist and rodent specialist, they do it all. Bats to rats, rodents, um, little the little ants, and things that you may not even know what they are. They are great at helping you in the attic, in the crawl space. They're going to resolve your problems. You can reach Green City Pests. You can simply Google Green City Pests, or you can go to their website, greencitypest.com. Their phone number is also 425-413-9700. That's 425-413-9700. 9700. I know for the Eastside real estate team, when we come across the pre-inspection and there are rodent issues, they are the first people we go to. The things that they can do is rodent abatement, which is a regular maintenance service, and then um, exclusion, so keeping them out. And then sometimes the crawl spaces get really kind of meshed up, kind of yeah, rodent infested, and they kind of they smell their nest, so they keep coming back. Well, they can clear all that stuff out, treat it, put new insulation in. Um, they're a great service and they know their stuff. So call Green City Pest at 425-413-9700. Now back to our show. We're here with Doug Peterson, one of our regulars, one of our favorites from Get Priority Straight, here to discuss personal cash flow basics. GPS was founded out of a passion for positively influencing individuals, couples, and business owners' um, lives by helping them transform their re relationships from the personal, from uh, helping them transform their relationships with their personal finances. Please join me in welcoming Doug Peterson. Welcome to the show, Doug. Hey, Dan. Good to see you again. It's always good to be seen. So I've got uh, some great questions for you today. We're going to throw you a few curveballs. I'm just kidding. But before we do, would you mind playing us a little ditty on that guitar? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just a okay, prop. Okay, fine. All right, just a prop. Just, so you're telling me you don't know how to play the guitar. Uh, a little bit okay you can you can get yourself in trouble the only reason i have that is so i can walk over and pick it up and it, this looks like my real house when if, it's if, just a facade but it gives me a problem oh, that's good i love it so all right let's talk finances how many people have a cash emergency fund and quite frankly if i needed say i didn't have a cash emergency fund how much would i allocate towards it well you know i'm not a financial advisor but they'll tell you 30, three to six months uh, you need to start where you are. So if you're a single person, you know, having $500 helps, but you can spend $500 on a car repair out of the blue. So typically I get people up to 5,000, but then over time, slowly adding to it, get three to six months worth of survival income. And the people that have it, there are over 25% of people making over 150,000 that did not have an emergency fund at all. Literally they're paycheck to paycheck. And between 100 and 150,000, it's 37%. So 
So it's a big number of people that don't have any cash reserves. And by the way, a credit card is something you can draw on, but it's not an emergency fund. It's debt. Mm -hmm. It's debt. Sure. You got to pay off the debt. Right. So it's not like you're tapping into money that's set aside. It's you're actually going negative. Yep. But it's, yeah, yeah, I get that. All right. So um, on the average, do people know what it costs to live or even what they spent last month on average? Yeah, there's an article by uh, Intuit that talked about over 65% of the people in the U.S. don't know what they spent last month. And very few people know what it costs them to live. And they're not taking into account things like car expenses that they've already committed to. And we don't think about it. But an average used car, any used car, except for expensive ones, is going to run about 150 a month over five years. So if you're not setting aside 150 a month, you're probably going to get an eight to twelve to fifteen hundred dollar bill you weren't prepared for at some point. And it's things like home maintenance and yard maintenance and license tabs and insurances that come up every six months, Christmas, vacation. When people really factor in everything that they do spend, they realize they're about 25 to 50 percent short in what they think they're spending. It's a big number. So, is, so from a standpoint of best practices, if somebody were to say, yeah, I don't have an emergency fund, what is one thing they can do today just to get started on creating an emergency fund? Well, the first thing you do is just look at your expenses and begin. It's just like paying yourself first. You know, take something, take $25, take $50 and start building it. Count it as a real expense, but you set it aside. So they have it. Now, so many people just set it aside in another bank account so they can not spend it. Mm -hmm. um, I use a program called YNAB that allows you to set aside virtually so you know that you've already given that money a job and it's not available to spend. Yeah, and I think that that whole separate account thing is out of sight, out of mind, right? Um, and I, I've got mine set up where it just automatically drafts a certain amount every month into that account. So it's not, so I'm not using a YNAB product, but I'm using, I look at my bank account, it's not there, it's over in my reserve fund account. So it, it's maybe a different strategy, but it's something that you can just start with 25 and then next month do 50. And then the month after that, do a little bit more just to, as a, as yeah, a but, uh, something. But, but on that point, I'm looking at efficiencies too, making it as little work as possible mm, and okay. knowing where things are, the fewer bank accounts you have, bank accounts to balance, the easier it is. So you not only want to manage your finances and really control your cash flow, but you don't want to spend extra time. And if no, I get that. But, but to play devil's advocate, if I look at my account and it says I have $10,000, even though it's earmarked, I may just spend it. That's What's because you from doing that? that's, that's because you're doing something called checkbook budgeting. You look at how much money you have and say, I've got plenty. But if you've already set aside everything for all the things I mentioned earlier, that might be $1,200 or $1,500. And your emergency fund is another $5,000. You may only have $1,000 or $500 right. left. And since if you use my program, you don't even have that because you put it in your vacation fund or something else, a fun fund. Right. So I so really work at getting to away from change the way you look at it, right? Yeah, it's a different mindset. We don't want to do checkbook balance budgeting because it just doesn't work. You don't know what you've already committed to those dollars to. And how it's like time management. You know, if you look at all the things you've already committed to and start mapping it out on a calendar, how much time do you have left? Yeah, it can be really tight at that point. Almost none, usually. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you have kids. Yeah, and, and if you want to job, sleep at night. <laughs> and a marriage. Yeah. <laughs> and a life. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, what about stress and money? What, tell us about the correlation between those two. This is what one of the reasons I started this. I was working with executives doing executive coaching and mentoring for 20 years. And I have helped over 25 executives who were, were losing their health, were losing their marriage, or their business was struggling, all because of cash flow challenges. And it really came back to our last point. They were spending money before they built enough reserves. And if you think of your business or your personal money as a body, you need blood and you need extra blood in case you lose some blood. Well, there's an awful lot of people that say, we've got money, let's spend it. Instead of delaying that gratification just a little bit, how would you like to have 20 real estate investors that have cash? 
No, it'd love be him. A, love it, him. <laughs> you have a lot more choices, right? So, yeah. so you have to have some cash, both personally and in your business, to be able to make the best choices and proactively decide where your money's go before you spend it, instead of wondering where it went or why you don't have very much. Well, and I understand that a lot of that, the, I mean, finances is probably the top two things in a relationship that causes stress. Um, how, how does using a system like this help alleviate that stress? Well, in relationships, uh, <clears throat> a lot of it's opinion. We can't afford that. Well, afford it compared to what? Compared to your country club membership at the golf course, which I don't want, but you want, assuming you and I were married. Right, which, sure, we're, which, which, which we're no longer. No, we are not. Not, not anymore. <laughs> it just didn't go well. <laughs> no. <laughs> but what, but what, we're, what we're talking about here is now saying we've already given every dollar a job. So which bucket does it come out of? Should it come out of our vacation, our home improvement, our yard maintenance, our dining out, our wine budget, our grocery budget? Then it's a matter of, well, I don't want it to take out of any of those things. Well, then can you afford it? If nothing else, everything else is more important than this new thing you want, maybe you don't need it or want it. And it takes it from the emotional to the rational. Now it's just, well, where should we get the money from? Not, I have 10,000 in my bank account. We can use some of that because we've already decided where all 10,000 is going. Yeah, I just want to be clear for those watching that um, Doug is uh, in He's not, he's not a financial advisor. He's also not a marriage counselor, but I do understand that his conversations do help marriages. Is that correct? Oh man, I have had people say we never talked about money because it was so hard. And now they talk about it very easily and they don't have to talk about it a lot because they know where they stand. It makes a huge difference. And I thought if I could figure this out, I would be a bajillionaire. Because <laughs> wouldn't it be great? There's 57% of divorces are money related. Are money related. I believe that. And yeah. it's, it's not necessary. This is something that works 100% of the time and you can master it. Oh, awesome. All right. So let's talk about debt and what is okay and what should you avoid? Well, everybody's going to give you a different opinion. But any of assets that appreciate on a really simple level are okay. Because they're actually gaining in value. You have to look at the amount of interest you're paying. But I believe per, fr strongly that any consumer debt that you're paying interest on, on things that depreciate, including cars, which I understand are expensive, I would rather have you buy a cheaper car, save money, and then buy another car that's more expensive and sell your cheaper car than have you go out and get a BMW and just lose 20, 25% as you drive it off the lot. So yeah, anything I, I, that depreciates, you know, that'd be an investment property or your own property. Um, investments that's okay debt now by the way don't I was go waiting, I was waiting for you to say investment property Doug thank you for yeah but don't go into don't do debt for investments because you know you might be paying a lot of interest on that debt I've had people just putting into their 401k but they're carrying 25 percent interest on their credit cards yeah. well let's get the credit card interest gone and then start putting money in because you're still going backwards but investments you know this is what people don't realize that if you can live Within your means for a long time, you can really build wealth. And if you live within your means, you can build your investment portfolio as well and build some passive income. Yeah. And for those of you listening or watching this, you know, talking about this, I mean, really, it is great to, um, to feel comfortable about your debt, or excuse me, about your financial situation. And it's even better to make money while you're sleeping. And putting Doug's principles into action is a catalyst for you be being able to make some financial choices that put you in positions to buy um, investment properties, which um, I would have to, I, I don't know if you can agree with me or not. It, it really does depend on certain individuals, but it's probably the number one most stable way to grow wealth in the long term is to be on a, a plan and then invest in properties that pay you a positive cash flow every day every, at night yeah. while you're sleeping. I can't think of any better situation. And when you look at real estate, it's not just the, the income that you make, but it's the appreciation and the depreciation that you can use against uh, tax returns. So there's a lot of real good benefits. And it really does start with the principles that Doug's talking about here today. Yeah. And, and, and to also add to that, you need staying power. So we have had downturns in the market. 
and people have been underwater, but it's come back. And over the last 90 years, I think the average appreciation has been five or 6%, something like that yeah. over the entire time. It's just, it's amazing how consistent it's been if you can wait it out. And also yeah. don't just think about investments as I have to buy a separate property. You know, we decided to upgrade our house and decided to rent out our basement for five years. Well, we had, we made an extra hundred and twenty thousand dollars in our own well, home. So you can buy there, a house there are, with an ADU yeah. possibility in it, and then cover a bunch of your mortgage while you've got yeah, a larger house appreciating. Yeah, there's places in Seattle and uh, the surrounding east side areas that uh, allow for what's called a dadu, which is a, a, an additional dwelling unit on the same property. So you can use that strictly for, you know, a college student that is that is needing an affordable place to stay or a, a couple that are aging and they don't want to go, you know, they, they don't want a whole house. They want just a nice little tiny home. I, I actually sitting in on a seminar uh, tomorrow about some of the um, creative things that are being done with these ADUs or DADUs as some of the uh, nicknames are called. All right, so let's get back to some practical tips. So um, how can you know where your money is being spent? The only way is you have to track it and it's easy. So many people think that's a bunch of work but it's 10 to 20 seconds after you make a decision of something you wanna buy and you put it in your phone. And there's a very inexpensive app. YNAB's the best one, but there's others. Now, the cool thing, the important thing is, though, if you know where your money's being spent, you're not managing it unless you know how much you have left for that month. If you're it's just almost tracking like gamification it, at that point, right? Yeah, it's just, if you're just tracking it, it's record keeping. So people go, oh yeah, I've got Quicken, I've got all this stuff, but I don't ever look at it. It's just telling you how much you spent, but without any thought at all. Okay. And how does somebody find that app? Uh, it's YNAB. It stands for you need a budget, or you can just go to um, Doug at getpriorystraight.com and I'll send you a link for it. But they have a 34 day uh, free trial. And that's one of the tools I use in the work I do. Okay. Um, okay. So why is it that you think people give up on budgeting? <laughs> it's we have made our lives so complicated and the financial industry has done a tremendous job at hiding costs. Anything you buy on Amazon says Amazon on it, on your credit card statement. Anything you do with Venmo says Venmo. You have subscriptions. It just seems like too much work for too little return, right? I sat down and I figured it all out and I know where I stand today, but a month later, where do I stand? So you need a good system so that you're keeping track of things in a way that takes less than two hours a month to manage all your finances, balance all your accounts, pay all your bills, and be able to plan. And it takes a little bit of work to get organized. Think of your messy garage, and now you've cleaned it up, and it took a lot of work to clean it up and get rid of stuff, but now you can find stuff. Now it's efficient. You no longer know you had it somewhere but awesome. can't find it all right so doug i really appreciate you uh joining us today if the listeners or watchers would like to reach out to you you can go to his website at getpriorystraight.com or set up a complimentary consultation at schedulewithdoug.com that's a new site schedule with doug yeah it just takes you right to my calendar and you can either okay. see my phone number or you can schedule a, a 10 25 or 40 minute meeting you know, I, when I think of that website schedule with Doug, I think of the the movie. What is it? Home away, home, home. Wait, where where is the dog? Doug. Hi, dog, dog. Doug. Squirrel. Yeah, the dog. Doug. Squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah, schedule with Doug. I get to see Doug. Sorry. I, I, schedule with Squirrel dot com. Schedule with Squirrel. Doug. Is that what's the name of that movie? It's Up Up. up Sorry. Yeah, it was Up Up. Where his house, like that's a homeowner's, like you know, the house, they relocate it using balloons. Oh, it's kind of great. Well, uh, Doug, again, thank you so much for coming on our show. I really appreciate the conversation. It is an invaluable asset to get your priorities straight. And Doug is fantastic at what he does. So I encourage anybody listening to reach out to him and uh, alleviate stress, have a better marriage, have all the money to invest. Um, there, there's all kinds of positive outcomes that can come from meeting with Doug. So please reach out to him. 
Um, we are always looking for great small businesses on the east side to feature. And I told you guys I was in uh, um, Kansas City and I'm looking forward to some Kansas City barbecue tonight and that it did relate back to uh, the east side and Seattle's east side podcast. So a few years ago, uh, my son was looking for some extracurricular activities. Having grown tired of running so much, playing soccer, he, uh, he decided to quit. And uh, I said, listen, you got to do something. You can't just, you know, sit around and play video games all day. You got to do something. So pick something. And, and he threw out the term rugby. Hey, I'd like to do rugby. And I think what he was thinking when he said that was, there's no way in heck my dad is going to find anything with rugby for me to do. So he's going to have to send me to Australia, and which has been something he's always wanted to do. Well, it just so happens that uh, a gentleman that was helping one of my clients close a loan, um, I read in his LinkedIn profile, and it says that he is the president of the Eastside Lions Rugby Club. I was like, well, let me ask him about it. So after about an hour conversation with him telling me how amazing rugby is and it's a great community, uh, we ended up uh, heading out and I think he was, my son was entering eighth grade, heading out to a summer sevens um, uh, rugby uh, team in uh, Bellevue. So he went and had a great time and then winter came along and went out for the 15s. And so the Eastside uh, Lions is a, a club, a private club that compromises players all around the Eastside and Seattle. It has a pretty storied history. As a matter of fact, back in, uh, let's see, it's 2021. So this was back in 2018. The club took a tour to Ireland um, and played three matches against three seasoned Irish, Irish clubs. Um, and beat them all. And then that following year, not that same year, but the year after that, they ended up going to the, um, uh, the Nationals um, in Salt Lake City and placed third in the nation. So they were invited back the next year, but the next year was 2020, COVID year. Um, so my son was really disappointed to not be able to play last year, uh, but the club was invited back this year. So I am in Kansas City with the East Side Lions Rugby Club, who is going to be playing for the national championship. So we'll keep you all posted on Facebook of how things go. Our first match, their first match is tomorrow. Um, and it is about 90 degrees with about 78, 80% humidity. So it's going to be quite the different match than it would be in the Northwest. It's hot, and muggy. So it's going to be tough for the big boys. So anyways, we'll set, look for our, um, our posts on Facebook. And uh, that's some of the culture. If you know of anybody, any kids wanting to get out, it's uh, co-ed. They have guys' teams, girls' teams. They can come out and play. Um, feel free to reach out to us. So that is our show. We just want to thank you all for watching. And uh, if you uh, decide now is the right time to buy or sell on the east side, connect. Let's discuss. You can reach out to us. Our website is the eastsiderealestateteam.com and our number is 425-200-4093. Thanks to our guest, Doug Peterson with Get Priority Straight. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful week.